Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to look a little bit at screed times. Now, this is a pretty typical garage pour for us. It's 36 by 24 residential garage. It's 4 inches thick. We're using 3500 PSI concrete with fiber mesh, water reducer in it. It's got a little air entrainment in it because of freeze thaw up here in Maine. But these, this, this is basically how most of our residential garage floors go. Um, we're working for the guys that did the concrete walls. And then what they do is, you know, usually the general contractor will hire them if they're not the general. And then the general contractor will hire an ex the excavation company, the guy that does the digging, the backfilling, and he gets the, the sub base prepped. And then we come in and we'll, we'll lay down the plastic, we'll snap our grade lines, put up our forms for the garage doors, and pour, finish, and saw the concrete. So that's kind of, you know, we kind of come in on the tail end of this before the building starts and get our part done. But today, you know, I didn't really, when I made this video, I didn't really set out to time how fast or how quick or how long it takes to screed a concrete floor like this. But when I was making the video, I was like, geez, that's, that might be kind of cool just to time the actual amount of time it takes to screed. So that's what we're going to take a look at as the video rolls on here. And in the meantime, you know, I just kind of want to show you just what it takes to pour us a, what I consider a basic, simple garage floor, you know, maybe a, a two bay garage or a three bay garage. A um, couple loads of concrete here. This is generally around 14 yards of concrete at four inches thick. It's a little bit thicker in front of the garage doors. So we can get about 10 and a half yards on our trucks up here in Maine on these rear dumps anyway, legally. We use, we use mostly we use this company right here, um, Haley Concrete, and they're really local to us. Now Haley has about five concrete plants in the state of Maine, but the one that's closest to us only has rear dumps. That's the only type of truck they can fit under their, their uh, the batching station. So the, the front dumps that they have are just a little bit too tall to get under there. So we use a lot of rear dumps where we're at. And you know I, I know a lot of you guys in other parts of the country use front end dumps mostly. <laughs> you may never see a rear dump like this or never use one, but we usually do. So pretty normal for us. Uh, for me like that running the chute like that telling the driver to you know move forward or back up while I'm running the chute that's that's just a normal thing for us where you guys might not have to worry about that because the front dump guys do it all for you now this is the middle of the summer so we got uh, we got some summer help here usually it's just me Darren and Luke uh, Darren's the one mag floating the edges Luke's the one kind of the brown t-shirt and then the guy in the blue t-shirt, his name's Luke too, but he's a, he's still in high school. He's a summer help. And then Eric there way in the background is actually a school teacher. So he's off on summer break. So he helps us in the summers. He's been working for us 20 plus years doing this. Um, so, you know, a five-man crew in the summer works out great for us because we're usually used doing these things with just three of us. So what we like to do is generally when there's two trucks, We'll, we'll completely pour out the first truck. Just get them poured right out. Get it as close to grade as possible using the chalk lines. You know, if somebody's coming around behind us and magging the edges, and then that helps a little bit get things to grade. And then right now what Darren's doing is he's just checking the laser, making sure everything's perfect. So when he shoots, what he's going to do, he's going to make a what we call a wet pad there in the middle. The wet pad will be the same grade as the outside edges because this floor is flat. And then that just gives us something to screed off from in the middle as you'll see how we're going to screed uh, We're going to strike a pad down the middle before we use we're using a battery operated screed today a power screed and That's what we're going to be timing just how long it takes us to use a battery operated screed to get this garage floor completely screeded So this is our process of getting our grades you know, we, we mag float the outside to a chalk line that we set with a laser. And then we use our self-leveling laser to get our screed pad in the middle. And the way, you know, we've done, this is the way we've done this for years. And what we found is this gets our floors really, really flat, if that's what you're looking for, flat, level, flat, whatever you call it. But it gets it, you know, 
within an eighth of an inch. So this is the screed time. You know, I I left this at real time here so you can see just how kind of fast or slow, whatever you want to think. But you guys let me know in the comments just what you think about how this screed does, how screeding with a power screed does. Now we don't we don't run this thing at full throttle. We don't we run it usually about half throttle. You can go faster with this, you can go a little bit slower with this if you want. But we generally find, you know, just uh, just slow and easy gets us gets our floors like so much flatter because we really want the two guys raking, which is Luke and Eric right here, to do most of the work. And what Darren's basically doing is, you know, he's giving it a little bit of throttle. He's just pulling backwards on it. The, the screed board tends to float on the concrete, so you just pull it backward at the right speed, and he's watching both ends to make sure both ends are touching the right end and the left end on our pads at all times. And if they are, it's leaving that relatively even line as he goes, then we know our floors are nice and really flat. And we can, we can kind of check that when we bull float. You know, if that bull float runs over there nice and flat with no gaps or dips or humps under the bull float you know you're doing you know you're doing the right thing with the screed now this for us this is pretty easy because we do it every day that's all we do is pour flat work you know we don't do walls uh, we don't do footings we don't do any other type of concrete work other than flat work so floors slabs pool decks patios you know anything flat with a little bit of slope sometimes you know is what we do so every single day we got concrete ordered except for maybe <laughs> usually Sundays but five sometimes six days a week we're pouring concrete and the if you look at that screed like if you've never used one of those that probably that probably looks a little bit easier to you than just trying to bend over and screed concrete with like some, I still see some guys using a 2x4. Like we don't use 2x4s. We use magnesium screeds that kind of look like a 2x4, and they come in all different lengths. That's usually what pros use is some type of some type of magnesium screed, or they use a power screed like this to do these types of floors. So this, this basically ha half the garage, maybe even a little bit more than half the garage, and if I time that out, that was basically three minutes of screed time right there to get that first half done. So that's that's pretty fast. And then you know I'm coming I'm coming right behind Darren with the bull float and just getting it. You can see how nice and smooth and even that bull float. So I'm going at 90 degrees to the screed, and there's there's nothing under there that indicates any humps or dips in the floor. I don't know. I sometimes I'll see guys bull float. And there'll be a big gap under the bull float, and they're shoveling in concrete to try to fill in that gap. Um, that's not really what you want to do, or what you want to see when you're screeding. You know, after you run the bull float over it, you want to see it look just like that. So now on to the second truck. And again, we'll pour this. We like to pour this second truck out almost completely out to the form there where the concrete truck driver is standing, and then we'll leave a little bit of the floor open there in case. In case we end up being a little bit high in here, we have a little hole to pull that high into instead of shoveling out. But sometimes it actually takes, it probably actually takes half, 50% of the time just to get the concrete dumped out of the truck like this. And I could tell him, I could tell him to run the concrete faster. Like he can run that concrete out of the chute at all different types of speeds. Um, but we like, we like to go at a certain pace. That way the guy, the guy ra uh, raking the concrete behind the chute can kind of, can kind of what we call tune it in. He can kind of eyeball it with the, the chalk line there, or where the guy has mag floated the edges, and he, so he's kind of raking it back and forth, trying to get it as close to grade as he can without getting it low. We actually want it a tiny bit high. That way, it's it's a lot easier to pull the concrete back than it is to stop when you're screeding and, and pull it back up it's it's just easier to keep pulling it backwards and so basically what we're doing is we're trying not to go too fast to rush this and get the concrete way too high um, you got a certain amount of time to unload the concrete when you're pouring 
And if you do this, if you guys do this a lot, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't do it, if you've never done it, then most concrete companies will give you, you know, seven or eight minutes per yard of concrete. So if you got if you got 10 yards of concrete on a truck, you got about a little over an hour to get it dumped. Now, for us, we're gonna dump a truck out here in about four or five minutes to dump out probably like seven yards of concrete. So you can see it doesn't really take a lot of time to dump a truck out if you know what you're doing, if you have like a plan, if you have a process, if you have a certain method of the way you do it. You just kind of got to know what you're doing a little bit. And that's that's a lot of the reasons why I put a lot of these videos out, just to give you guys kind of an idea of what guys do that do this every day, you know, how, how they go about it. And you got to kind of know how much working time you have with the concrete too, that helps. And that kind of depends on, you know, how what the temperatures are that day, how hot it is, how far the truck has traveled, what kind of mix you're using. Is it, are you directly in the sun? Is it windy out? You know, there's a few other things that come into play with setup times. You know, are you using an accelerator or not? So all those things come into play. All right, so here we are. We got most of that dumped out. He's, he's got a little bit left on. You can see the hole we left there by the form. Actually, the form started to bow out just a tiny bit. So me and Eric over there just fixing that. And then here we are going back to the screed time again. We, I also feel like when you're using a power screed like this, having two guys raking behind it, one on each side of the guy, you know, holding the power screed handles, makes for a little bit easier job and a little bit more consistency and not having to stop and start the power screed than if you only got one guy. Because if the concrete starts building up too much on the back side of that screed, then it gets hard to pull that thing backwards evenly. So you want both sides and when I mean both sides, you know, the right and left of the, the guy running the handles. You want both sides consistently with just a tiny bit of concrete high on the back side of that screed, him pulling that back. And then as you can see what Luke and Luke, actually Luke and Luke are doing now is they're just, if Darren's high, he, they're raking that back a little bit, just leaving a little bit of a lip there. And if, if it looks like there's a little gap gonna, gonna show up under the screed, if it looks a little bit low, then they're making sure they're pushing that up, filling that gap, and otherwise he's gonna leave a little bit of a low spot there. So look at how the two guys raking are working compared to how the guy pulling the handles on the screen are working. I mean, so what I would consider Darren, Darren's not having to work very hard. He's just trying to keep that thing consistently going, consistently moving backwards, giving it a consistent amount of vibration. And then Eric and Luke with Luke behind them are just making sure the concrete's at the right level. So when you're screeding something like a floor like this, you know, it doesn't really matter which way you go. It just matters that you got kind of a, a plan of attack to get to one final corner, you know, screed your way backwards and be able to step outside. If, if you can't step outside for some reason, let's say you was in a basement and these walls are a lot taller, then you got to screed your way back to a corner and then you'll, you know, pick the screed up, pass it over the wall, and then you'll finish screeding in the corner with a, a small hand screed. Now that we know that we're not going to have a lot of high in there, we can. Uh, you can see I'm over there with Luke dumping a little bit more concrete in by the form. And we're trying to get that filled up to, to keep Darren from having to stop too much. And then, you know, we'll mag the rest of that form. We set that form to grade so we can mag float right to the top of the form. And just finish screeding. We don't like to, we don't like to run a power screed over the top of, let's say, a 2x4 form and then with one end and then have the other end on the wet concrete it tends to want to make the make the end on the wet concrete kind of kind of dig in a little bit deeper than it normally would if one's if one end is sitting on something hard and firm like a two by four and one end isn't so what we find works best is if you're screeding with one one of these things right off the wet concrete itself 
that's what we feel works best. And then, so Darren's getting right down to the end here. And if we're timing this thing, you know, he's at about, he's getting up close to seven minutes of screed time now. And he's gonna finish up at, right when he gets down to the very end, when he pulls it up, he's gonna finish up at seven minutes and 15 seconds of screed time to do a 36 by 24 garage lap. So let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. Do you think that's fast, slow, or do you think that's pretty good? I mean, you can see the pace he's going at. He's not really going that fast. If we if we did want to go fast, if I did tell the guys, hey, we're gonna we're gonna video this, we're gonna time it, we're gonna see how fast we can go, but still be really really accurate. You know, he, he probably could have shaved a little bit of time off this, but that wasn't the whole point when we started out pouring this. So, I just want to get you guys' point of view, what you think about screeding like that. And then, so when we pull that off, we always like to check the garage doors, make, their, make sure it's nice and flat across the doors. So we'll use our 14 foot hand screed to do that. And then I'm gonna finish up bow floating. Let me know what you guys think. And then uh, stay tuned right here at the end. We're gonna talk just a bit of, uh, I'm gonna talk to you just a little bit about what we did here again. All right, that's gonna do it for that. So we'll leave a couple guys here to finish. It's gonna be a nice day today. It's supposed to be up about 80, sunny. Uh, it should dry. We should probably be done by noon, soaring and power trialing. Wanna get your boat? I got another hose over there on the hook shot. I'm okay. All right, we're gonna clean up and get out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.